this lesson I'm going to show you how to find the nth term to quadratic sequences. If you've watched part one, you'll see that I showed you how to find the nth term when there's a constant difference between the numbers in a sequence. So for example, you're adding three each time to find the next number in a sequence, okay? For quadratic sequences, you'll see that that's no longer the case, okay? Here I'm just going to show you a few easier examples for finding the nth term in quadratic sequences and then after that I'll show you one that's a little bit more difficult okay, and a method that will work for all nth term, uh, finding the nth term in quadratic sequences. Okay, So let's look at the first sequence of numbers 1, 4, 9, 16. Okay, you might be able to spot already, these are special numbers, they're square numbers. Okay, So when I say square numbers 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, is 4, 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. So what you're doing is you're squaring the position number n each time to generate the numbers in that sequence. So that means the nth term should be n squared, okay? Notice how, like I said earlier, the differences each time are changing. Okay, so you can't use the method I showed you in part one. But when you consider the differences of those differences, okay, three, five, seven, can you see each time there's a difference of two between those differences? So when the second difference is constant, you know you're dealing with a quadratic sequence, okay? So you know n squared will be somewhere in your nth term. Let's look at the second sequence of numbers. 2, 5, 10, 17. Well, if you compare it to the first line, okay, here, 1, 4, 9, 16, notice how each of these numbers is one more than the sequence above it. If you add 1 to here, it takes you to 2. If you add 1 to here, it takes you to 5. So because it's one more each time, you look at the nth term here and you add 1. Okay, so to generate the numbers in that second sequence, you're squaring the position number n and adding 1 each time. Okay, so if you look at the fourth number, the fourth term, if I square the number 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and add 1, it gives me 17, which is the fourth number in that sequence. Okay, so I know it works. If we look at the third sequence of numbers and compare it to that first line again, n squared, this time, we're subtracting 2 each time. So if you subtract 2 from here, it takes you to negative 1. 4 take away 2 is 2. 9 take away 2 is 7. So since we're subtracting 2 each time, the nth term should be n squared take away 2. So this, this nth term here, minus 2. So just to check to see if it works, let's take the fourth term again. So when n is 4. If I square the number 4, 4 times 4 is 16, and then take away 2, I get 14. And that is correct because that is the fourth number in this sequence. So here we've got a more difficult sequence of numbers. 10, 28, 56, 94. And if you try and compare it to that first sequence I showed you, n squared, you should see that there's not an obvious connection between these numbers and the new sequence. To get from 1 to 10, you add 9, but then to get from 4 to 28, you have to add 24. Okay, so we're not adding the same number each time to find those. So it's a little bit more complicated. When we look at the differences between the numbers in this new sequence, here we're adding 18, here we're adding 28, and here we're adding 38, okay? So we can't use the method I showed you in part one, okay? The differences are not constant. But when you check the differences of the differences, so the second lot of differences, can you see the differences are 10 each time? So because that second line of differences is constant, so it's always 10, we know it's a quadratic sequence, okay? And so the nth term will involve n squared somewhere, okay? Now, what you need to do is write down what I just did here. So the first line of differences and then the differences of the differences and consider the first number in your sequence, the first difference in this line here and also the second difference. And then there are three equations that you need to learn. The first one is 2a equals the difference 
in your second line. So the second line of difference is, so positive 10. The second equation, 3a plus b, is equal to the first difference in your sequence, okay? So the difference between the first two numbers, so positive 18. And the third equation, a plus b plus c, is equal to the first number in your sequence. So here it would be 10. And then you have to solve these three equations. So I've written them in this order because we're going to use this one first to solve and find A since it's only one unknown letter we can solve this one. So 2 multiplied by something is 10 so the something must be 5 because 2 times 5 is 10 so A is 5. Then you can substitute that value 5 into the next equation in order to work out the value of B. So, instead of writing 3a plus b equals 18, we now have 3 lots of 5 plus b is equal eight to 18. Because remember, a is 5. So, you're substituting 5 in place of a here. So, 3 times 5 is 15. So, I'm just simplifying my equation. And so, to solve and find b b must be 3, okay, because 15 plus 3 is equal to 18, so b is equal to 3. Then if I substitute my values of a and b that I just worked out into the final equation here, a plus b plus c equals 10, I can work out the value of c. So a is 5, so I'm going to substitute that in there. b is equal to 3, so I need to substitute that in here. And c we're trying to work out. Well, 5 plus 3 is 8, so 8 plus C is equal to 10, so C has to equal 2, because 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. So we've worked out our values A, B and C, 5, 3 and 2, and now we have to put this into the general expression for the nth term of a quadratic sequence, which I've written here. Okay, a n squared plus b n plus c. So you just replace a with 5, b with 3, and c with 2. If one of the numbers had been 0, for example, the value of b, well, you don't need to write 0 n because 0 times n is 0, so you could just leave that part out. Okay, so you're just substituting your values into the general format to work out the nth term. And then it's always good to do a little check at the end to make sure it works. So for example, let's take when n is two, okay, so the second number in the sequence. If you substitute that into your nth term, so five lots of two squared plus three lots of two plus two, so I'm just changing both the n values to two and work that out. Well, two squared is four, five times four is 20, 20 plus six is 26, plus another 2 is 28, and if I look back at my sequence of numbers, the second term is 28.